Hey, what's going on guys and gals? So, today we're going to talk about my thoughts, my impressions, this is my review of Guardians of the Galaxy by Marvel Studios. So, before we start, uh, I want to discuss this uh, beforehand. Uh, I am really not that familiar with the Guardians of the Galaxy comic book series. I don't think a lot of people actually are, to be completely honest. So, if there's things that I get wrong, please feel free to correct me, but I'm just going by what I know or what I've looked at. So, yeah. Uh, this film is basically uh, based off of a comic that was made in the late 60s that seemed to have grown in popularity by, I guess, the 80s or 90s, and uh, now we're here, basically. Uh, it's directed by uh, James Gunn, and I feel like James Gunn understood what he, was, what he was going for when he made this movie. He knew exactly how the characters were. He understood it's like, okay, you know, you have a raccoon who talks and whatnot and builds all these different gadgets, but he's not just a raccoon, you know? There's things that make him tick. There's, there's flaws, there's personality, there's a lot of personality, and that's everything, you know? That's all the characters on this team. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is a really fun film to watch because it's almost like you're not watching a superhero movie, but you are. Uh, these guys consist of assassins and robbers and bounty hunters and all sorts of things, murderers, and somehow they have to unite for a purpose to save the galaxy. And I think it's a brilliant thing. It's a brilliant idea. Now, the thing that I really enjoy about the movie is it's literally a breath of fresh air. It is like polar opposite of what we have seen before where these wholesome heroes, these guys uh, smoke, they drink, they curse. They gambled, you know, they ain't uh, class acts, you know, they are what they are, and they're rebels, definitely. Uh, you know, you have Chris Pratt who plays Star-Lord, who you see in the beginning of the films, his very sad story where his mom was apparently dying of cancer, and she's about to die, and there's this whole thing, and then he runs outside of the hospital uh, as she passes away and gets abducted as a little boy, and he finds out he's kind of a, a thief, and... And uh, he wears this really cool mask like he does in the comics. He uses these big, like, electrical guns. And you have Zoe Saldana, who plays uh, Gamora, who is, like, the adopted daughter of Thanos. And she's all, like, genetically altered and mechanically and all that stuff. And she's, like, a badass that uses, like, the sword. And she's just really, like, she works for Ronin. And they have this whole rivalry with her sister, who's actually the daughter of Thanos. Um... Uh, Nebula and there's this whole again rivalry and they have obviously they fight in the movie and whatnot too and then you have you know um, you have like Drax the Destroyer who they, they actually end up meeting in prison who's played by Dave Bautista and he's uh, trying to seek revenge for his murdered wife and child and he's like this big green brute guy and he's just crazy strong and then of course last but not least you have Rocket Raccoon and you have Groot, who are like these two very animated characters, and the CGI looks great on them. They look real. Uh, you know, Rocket's obviously a talking, experimented on raccoon who could build a bomb or a gun or whatever, anything, and he's he's just really funny. Uh, Bradley Cooper brings this really cool, like, uh, almost like street-savvy accent to the character, and I love it. I think it's, it's really nice. A lot of the time you hear Rocket with a British accent, so this is kind of interesting. Uh, and Groot, who's voiced by Vin Diesel, who's like this eight-foot tree guy who can extend. And, and shoot these little petals off to light the way and all this crazy stuff and he just says I am Groot that's it that's all he can say but Rocket can understand him uh, together they all end up in prison after uh, Star-Lord uh, Chris Pratt steals this orb uh, and you find out that there's an infinity stone in it which is all leading to this big infinity gauntlet thing with Thanos uh, Gamora's obviously going after him for Ronin the Accuser, who's the bad guy, which we'll talk about in a sec, and obviously Rocket and Groot want the bounty, and uh, then Drax is kind of in prison. They all unite to, to stop, um, you know, basically to break out and stop uh, Ronan. Ronan basically wants to destroy the main hub planet where everybody lives, where billions of people live, and to do that, he needs Thanos uh, to destroy the planet. But Thanos wants the Infinity Stone. Uh, in return, but of course Ronan's like screw that now Thanos is if you don't know uh, Thanos is a major 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 player in the Marvel Universe He's like the strongest in the galaxy and he goes across this whole trek to collect all of the Infinity stones which are these scattered stones of immense power of different every one of them has a different thing So one's like a time gem one's a power gem soul gem, etc, etc, and they're you use them together to create the Infinity Gauntlet, which gives you the pretty much endless power, which makes you, like, just higher than a god, essentially, in the, in the universe. 
So Thanos is a major player, and finally we get to fully see him, and he's played by Josh Brolin, and Josh Brolin's voice freaking knocks it out of the park. Uh, Thanos is more decked out in a gold suit. Personally, I think he looks great. I would like more of a traditional suit. It looks more like the recent stuff, but uh, I'm just happy to see Thanos in any form, and I'm really excited that they're building to it. And what's great is... Um, don't forget, uh, you know, the main villain is not Thanos, but Thanos is, is in the background a lot of the time, so it's like they give you nods to, like, our, what's going to happen later in the Marvel Universe, but it's great because Ronan really takes uh, the, the center stage, and, and he's a real no BS, uh, you know, Lee Pace plays this really no BS, um, stereotypical but really hardcore evil villain, you know, this bad guy, and, you know, he, he just wants to just take over everything. Uh, so eventually, obviously, he gets the stone and all this hell breaks loose, and that's all I'll say to that. And these these five that have nothing in common with each other have to team up, and it's great because the dialogue is so strong, then the humor is so strong. And normally you'd think, oh, God, if it's too humorous, it's going to suck. No, it works perfectly, and it feels natural. Uh, you know, you have someone like Drax, who's very uh, well-spoken. He's like a, just like a whole vocabulary, I guess, of uh, just a whole library of different things. I don't know the metaphor for it. I'm sorry. And then you have, like, you know, Rocket, who's just kind of, like, talking like, like you know, like, street shit. And, you know, it's just funny to see guys like this talking together. There's a scene in the movie where they argue for, like, five minutes about a plan and and Star Lord says he has about twelve percent of a plan and it's it's just whole it's it's hysterical. There's so many funny things in this movie. But it works well. It's not it it's like the humor is not actually taking anything away from the film. It adds to their character. Like they're a bunch of jackasses essentially, which is actually said in the film. Anyways, so they're not like superheroes, but of course they're very strong and they have like, you know, all their little kinks and whistles or whatever, all their different things. However, it's interesting because they, they don't have powers and they're using weapons and all sorts of fighting things. Uh, it's fun to see how they actually take down these enemies. And the answer is really giant big guns and spaceships. And it's awesome. Like, they always build cannons and bombs. It's like watching a really good Star Wars film. The, the, the CGI and all the worlds looks great. Uh... The, the ships look great. What's amazing is the sets look amazing. Like, you know, they, they have their CGI here and there, but it's for most part, it's humans dressed up as aliens and, there, and other things, and it looks like a real old-school kind of sci-fi movie, and it's great. The soundtrack's amazing, too, because it consists of, like, 70s or 80s music because Chris Pratt, Star-Lord's character, uh, the character Star-Lord, um, when he was abducted, he had a collection of uh, tape that had a collection of songs from uh, his time, uh, from his mom, and that was one of the last things sh uh, she gave him was the Walkman. So he's like constantly playing these old songs, and it's it's just a great soundtrack, like that hooked on a feeling song, and you hear like some David Bowie. And uh, speaking of that, they also have to get help from the collector who finally has a bigger role. It's uh, Benicio Del Toro, and he's great as the collector. You see all his weird stuff, and he f explains to them what the stone does, and you know, all this crazy, again, it's like, I don't want to say too much and spoil uh, the whole thing, but it, it is a fantastic film, uh, that there's enough scene, the thing that I, I love that, that this, to me, the, nailed this the most, besides the dialogue, is they gave everybody something, even if, like, they had John C. Riley who played, like, the head of the, the, I guess, their police, and they had Glenn Close, who was the head of the, uh, the Nova, the Nova Corps, the Nova Primes, and, Everyone gets their own thing. Like, even those two got their own scenes. You know, but everybody on the team got their own section, their own fights, their own things. And nothing felt like, you know, nobody felt uh, scrap. You know, like, one person got more than the other. Like, everybody felt natural. Even though, uh, obviously, Star-Lord's going to be the front guy representing everything. But it's it's a great movie. It's a lot of fun. The action's great. Uh, the characters are great. It, again, it's literally a brush of fresh air. I think this is one of the best movies Marvel's ever put out. Uh, it's definitely up there, and uh, you really have to go see it. So, yeah. Go see Guardians of the Galaxy. I have to start reading this stuff now because I feel bad. I passed up on a Rocket Raccoon book years ago. Like, I knew about some of the stuff in this. I knew about the team. Like, this is more of a recent team. However, I don't know, like, a lot. So, I, you know, I'd be talking in my ass if I, otherwise. Any guys. Anyways, guys, go see the movie. It's freaking awesome. And uh, I can't wait because now they're doing a sequel, which is pretty ballsy, but I'm really happy. And uh, I'm going to spoil the end credit scene. Uh, so here's the spoiler tag. Boom. And uh, yeah, so you've been warned. Turn the video off now. Uh, if not, stay tuned. So yeah. All right. Whew. 
Guardians of the Galaxy, Rock a Raccoon and the Motherfucking Tree. Yeah. Guardians. Seriously, turn off the video now if you don't want to be spoiled. All right, I'm going to spoil it. So at the end of the movie, uh, what happens is the Collector actually tells them what's going on, what's in this orb. It's the one of the uh, Infinity Stones, the gems. And one of his servants is like, I won't be a servant to you anymore. And she touches it and explodes and this whole thing. Now in the film, the Collector tells them that uh, six people are able to hold the gem and just for a little bit because only the strongest can use them. These gems are so powerful they're sealed away and anybody who's not strong enough just boom it just causes destruction. So that's shown in the film and some other stuff which I'm not going to explain everything. But at the end of the film Del Toro's lab is destroyed by a servant who touches the stone. He's getting up at the end of the movie and he's giving a drink and Cosmo the dog's out of his, his glass or his cage and he licks his face and all of a sudden you hear why do you let him lick you like that or something like that and they pan the camera over to a broken glass and it's Howard the freaking duck drinking something. I couldn't believe it. And Howard looks awesome. His eyes are a little small, but he looks amazing. Uh, I thought I was the only person I ever knew who read Howard the Duck. I used to get Howard the Duck and Silver Surfer comics from uh, my grandma, arcades, all kinds of stuff. And I used to love that they would push him into these situations and he would make fun of Disney and smoke cigars and drink and hang out with Silver Surfer and they go across the galaxy. Howard the Duck is a great character. Unfortunately, you know, his past with the movie and all that. But, oh my God, if he shows up in the second one and he helps them out somehow, like he guides them or something, I'm not expecting him to join the team, but if he, like, helps them out or anything, I'll be so happy. It sounded like he was voiced by Seth Green. Uh, I'm going to have to wait until it shows up online. But yeah, Howard the Duck is in this movie. It was awesome because it wasn't connecting the universe. It was just like a, almost like a gag or like a joke or whatever. I never got a laugh out of it. So yeah, Howard the Duck's in the movie. Go see this damn film. It's amazing. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for Guardians 2, Avengers 2. I can't wait for all this stuff to come out. Woo! Great time to be a Marvel fan. Anyways, guys and gals, take care. Love you. Peace. Uh, yeah. Woo!